It may be the case when we're in the laboratory that we are performing a series of reactions or adding you know, a series of substances to give an overall product. And we're gonna want a way to represent that final equilibrium condition based on the individual steps that we take to get there. So we have a couple of tools to do that. Our first tool is that if we have a reaction for which we know the equilibrium constant and we decide we want to flip that reaction so that the products now occur on the reactant side and vice versa, the new equilibrium constant will be the reciprocal one divided by the previous equilibrium constant. We can also adjust the quantities of all the substances by multiplying by a coefficient. So say for example that we wanted to double the quantities of all of these substances, then our new equilibrium constant will be the previous equilibrium constant squared. And if you were to write down the equilibrium expression based on this stoichiometry, you would find that you had increased the exponent by a factor of m for all the substances. And so you would get this relationship between these two. Now, if we want to combine our steps, then what we are going to do is, first of all, you can think of this as adding you know, regular polynomial equations where we have x's and y's and stuff. And in that case, substances which appear on the left and the right are going to cancel out. This is plus x on the left, plus x on the right, just subtract x from both sides. So we can do that with our substance C and our substance A. So our overall reaction here is B plus F gives us D plus G. And the equilibrium constant for this reaction which this is the overall expression, we'll just be multiplying the equilibrium constants from those previous reactions. So in general, the overall equilibrium constant for a series of reactions is just gonna be the product of the equilibrium constants of the individual steps of that reaction. Now right, well, let's say that we wanna find the equilibrium constant for this reaction, where we have hydrofluoric acid combining with oxalate anions to produce fluoride anions and oxalic acid. Now unfortunately, if we try to look up this reaction in some tabulated information, we don't find it, but we can look up the equilibrium constants for these two acids dissociating. Now when we do that, we find that the equilibrium constant for hydrofluoric acid decomposing into its ions is 6.8 times 10 to the minus four. And for oxalic acid, decomposing into its ions is 3.8 times 10 to the minus six. And we can combine that information in order to find the information that we're after for this equation. So something we might start noting is that our oxalic acid is on the right side and the, the equation that we desire to express, but in our tabulated information, it's on the left side. So we're gonna need to fix that which is pretty straightforward. We just flip this whole reaction here and put the products on the reactant side and the reactants on the product side. And the only catch is that since we've flipped it, that's gonna change the equilibrium constant. So it's gonna become the reciprocal of the previous value. So one divided by that 3.8 times 10 to the minus six. We may also notice that we have two HF on the left side here, but we only have one HF in our tabulated equation. So we're gonna to need to double this whole equation here. And if we do that, our rule is that we're gonna to need to square the exponent, use a squared exponent here for this equilibrium constant. And now we can add these two steps together since everything matches up. And if we do that, these H pluses are gonna cancel out our overall equation that we are left with is going to be the one that we are after, so that's good. Two hydrofluoric acids plus the oxalate gives us two fluorides plus the oxalic acid. And then finally, we just have to multiply the equilibrium constants for those two steps. 
And when we multiply those out, we get 0.12 as our equilibrium constant for the overall reaction.